Hello, welcome to Lost in Movies. I'm Alec Kerr, the film critic for the Conway Daily Sun, and I'm joined by... Jason Stevens, your new co-host. That's ex- right, full-time co-host. <laughs> I am loving it, yeah. You know, I've been doing Lost in Movies for like a decade. I, I've been I, very lucky. You invited me a few years back to yeah. do one, and I've been kind of popping in and out yeah. ever since, so it's it's been a blast. Thank and you. you've been kind enough to sponsor Lost in Movies. Yes, well, my company has. Yes, your uh, company. My company, Smoking Jay's Wicked Barbecue. I know you, you know what it is. I, I but do, yeah. My wife and I started it up during COVID when it shut everything down. You right. know, we, we decided to start our own business, so we do barbecue. Um, I'm a Southern boy, so I, I brought that Southern style up here. Um, and we do catering events, um, everything, man. We, you know, we, we run a food truck, so we run all over the state, but we uh, we really like to try to keep it local here so all everybody can come and enjoy. That's what started it, was I invited a bunch of friends over right. yeah, to a barbecue there. in the yard. You were there, and uh, it's never stopped. So we keep growing every year. We're already taking bookings for catering and jobs. You can find us on our Facebook page, Smoking Jay's Wicked Barbecue. Um, there's a number you can reach out and uh, ask us anything you'd like. We're 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 gearing up for this year. We'll be open in about a month and a half or so. All right, great. The snow melts. We'll be I'll be grilling, man. All so, right, yeah. good for them. All right, uh, so let's jump in. Let's talk about Scream Six. Scream Six. Woo. If you hadn't guessed, <laughs> woo! Yeah, so we're talking about the latest entry in the Scream franchise, and we went to see it together on Sunday, and you went with your 13-year-old daughter. Uh, and I was thinking about this. The first one came out in 1996. Uh, you're like a year older than me, so well, you'd have been like 13, 14. Yeah. So what was it like? You started watching this franchise when you were 13, 14, and now you're going with your 13-year-old daughter. <sighs> it makes me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the world has yeah. moved on, as they say. Yeah. I, it's great. You know, I really enjoyed the first couple of movies and then fell uh, fell away from the franchise yeah. as I got older because it's, it's a little campy, but... Yeah. It's great seeing her get so into the horror movies, especially with the screams, because for for the longest she wouldn't watch anything remotely scary, and now it's all about Ghostface. She's got the Ghostface backpacks, and you know, so it it was a lot of fun seeing her enjoy it um, and get into it that way. Yeah, it it was great. Yeah, because I kind of had a similar experience when I was a teenager, because I was a little bit hesitant about getting into horror movies. Mm. But the whole idea of Scream being a horror movie, but also a movie commenting on horror movies, uh, made it a little less intimidating. And it was all about establishing the rules. And I was like, okay, I can follow this. I can get these down. Yeah. Yep. I know the rules, so now I'm not, not going to die so in a scary, scary movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and I... And I'm still like I like horror, but it's not my favorite for, favorite yeah. genre. Of, yeah. And, uh, so I kind of like that the scream movies are a little bit campy, and I also appreciate that this is really the only franchise that had a core group of characters that continued from one movie to the next movie to the next movie. You had the those three main characters from the original movies. Yep. Uh, Sydney, Dewey. And Gale. And Gale. And not the fact that you have three survivors. You might have one survivor in a franchise, but the fact that you have three and the series was able to develop those characters over mm. a course of several movies is really kind of unique for a, for a slasher franchise. Oh, for sure. I mean, t- you look at Halloween, you really only followed the one. Right. And then it gets into some really crazy stuff and then comes back. But, it comes back. It's a mess. Y- y- but, yeah, in the way that they've passed the torch onto the new group. Yeah. Um, which are still all very heavily tied to the original group, right. um, is awesome. I, I really enjoy the new cast very much. Yeah, because yeah, the, the fifth film was sort of, and they since it is this whole meta thing, it does comment, the fifth film was a legacy sequel where you have legacy characters, and there's all these different movies that are doing this now, right. that pass the torch. But the torch was really well passed, and these new characters, they refer to themselves as the core four. The core four. The core four are just as likable as those original three. Oh, for sure. I really like how they're, they're, they've wrote these characters because it, it gives you it gives you some characters to follow, right. not just a survivor in a horror movie. You know, um, like the, the uh, I forget her name. I think her name is Melissa Barrera. Melissa Barrera. Yeah. She, her, her ties to Billy Loomis from the first movie right. is huge parts so of the So there's some continuity violence. too. Yeah, so. Yeah. Even the OG people that that remember the original Scream, they could pick up this movie without having seen any of the other ones and still be right, 
right, right along with everything. Yeah, and, and Gale I, is I really the only it. returning character from the original series. Yeah. Uh, Nev Campbell was supposed to return, but they didn't. They weren't going to pay her what she thought she was worth. Uh, so she passed on it. Honestly, uh, as much as Sydney was the face of this franchise, I feel like they would have been shoehorning her into this story, and I don't know how it would have fit. I mean, how many times are you going to see Sydney Prescott beat Ghostface? Yeah. It was kind of nice to see a new group do that. It was. Yeah, it was great. It was still the same original feels. I mean, right. you, you, Billy Loomis plays a huge role throughout right. now, five and six. Yeah, I don't want to give too much away, yeah. but... Yeah, it's it's great, you know. Yeah. So, even with the new cast, you still get all the old, the good old feels from the original movie. So. Yeah. And what I really liked about because all these films begin with the same basic setup, where it is the ghost face killer calls the first victim and they have a conversation. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, this one kind of flips the script on that, where you have a woman in a bar waiting for a date to show mm. up. Uh, she's played by Samara Weaving. At first, she gets a text, and then it's like, "Oh, can you? Can yeah, I, I mean, call? Yeah, what what color is the building? Yeah. I don't see uh, it. Uh, can yeah. you get outside?" And what is really cool about this is, at first, it's just the guy's regular voice, yep. and about halfway through, once he's actually got her outside, she, he switches on the ghost face voice, the yeah, Randy was, Jackson ghost face voice. Yeah, it was a good take on that. The yeah. opening scene for I, sure. I won't get any further than that because no. then it starts getting into spoilers. But that was a really interesting way of taking what you expect and flipping it. Which oh is, yeah, they're giving you exactly what you know you're about to see, but they deliver it in a way that you don't see coming. Right. I, it hooked me. Yeah. The opening scene, I was like, oh. This mm, is new. Mm. And then there's another little twist, which I don't want to get into, that could have shown like a completely different direction for oh, the yeah. film to go. They don't go down it, but the fact that they even like... Hinted that, that they might? Yeah. I was... I was hoping they did. Yeah. Because I was like, yeah. Really? There was like 20 minutes where I was like, this is really yeah. interesting. This is going to be an interesting movie. And then it, you know, turns into a regular scream in a way. In a way. Uh, so that was good. really cool. Uh, this one also, in terms of legacy characters, does also bring back Hayden Pentier's Kirby. Yep. Who, it looked like she died in the fourth one, but she's, she didn't. She didn't. She, she made it. She made yep. it. Uh, won't, won't say what her role is, but. The whole time we were like looking at each other like, I don't know if I trust it's, her, man. That's the thing. These movies have <laughs> set it up so good that you don't trust anyone. You don't trust anyone. Like a new character, you're like, mm, all right, watch him. What yeah. happened? What, what, yeah. What's he doing? Yeah. yeah. And that's <laughs> also the other cool thing about this franchise in terms of a slasher franchise is that Ghostface isn't one monster or one person. Right. It's a new person, except for Scream 3. It was always at least two people. It's a yep. new group of people, <laughs> pair of people that are Ghostface. And so these are whodunits. They're murder mysteries. So you're just sitting there like, all right, I don't trust you. And they've I don't done, trust you. And they're good. Yeah. They're, the writers are great at, yeah. at misdirection. I will say that. They must be, you know, like secret magicians because they're definitely like, look over here, not yeah. over here. Yeah. So. And so, well, we, we were watching and there was a couple characters we clocked as, I don't trust them. <laughs> yeah. I don't trust them. Uh, but there are some good red herring, some good misdirections. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, there is a formula here, so, like, it, I, they do keep do managing to do it, but because you have the core characters you know are like, okay, those are the good guys. Anytime there are new characters introduced, you're like, all right, it's one of these. Yeah, yeah it's got to be these. It's got to be him. And, and they do a very good job at misdirection in this yeah. movie because I thought for sure I knew who the killer was at one point, and then all of a sudden you don't. And yeah. I got one out of... I'm not saying anything else. Yeah. I, I was able to guess one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to list the, the new actors. No, in I because, don't want to say nothing. Yeah. yeah it, 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 that was a lot of the fun for the movie for me was trying to guess. Yeah. Like, who, I, who I wrote my review, and when I was writing all the new actors that appear in, in the, I was made sure to alternate, like, between <laughs> victims and uh, killers so mm. that, like, nobody, mm. like, mix it up. Mix it up so yeah. people could be like, oh, well, those three right there, or those yeah. four right there, they're the killers. They've got to be the killers. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, yeah, they did a really good job with uh, keeping you, like, on your toes. Now, when we came out of it, you were like, I don't know how I feel about the big reveal. Like, you were a little, like, kind of lukewarm on it. Without getting into spoilers, I know it's hard to talk about. Yeah, it. without getting into spoilers, it just seemed, at some points they're right on with the writing and everything like that, and yeah. then at, at other points it seems like they've got a stretch, they've got a reach. 
This is the sixth movie in the franchise yeah. where it follows basically the same formula in every single movie. So trying to keep it relevant, it, it, I think it got a little muddled yeah. myself. But it's still a pretty solid movie. For the sixth movie in this slasher yeah, franchise, I think they're doing just fine. Yeah, the, yeah. the motives of the killers... Uh, uh, it's yeah. a little... It, it what was you a said, stretch. It's a little bit muddled, and... I will say this, there's, without getting into spoilers, uh, there is a ghost face killer that kills another ghost face killer. Yes. Uh, and there is like some con, some kind of like conversation that could, I think could have been explored a little bit more where the one, the ghost face killer that is killed is talking about how he much he enjoyed it and how like the person became meat. And it's a really creepy monologue. It is a creepy monologue, yeah. Uh, and the one, the ghost face killer kind of has had this moral high ground of like, oh, well, now do you feel like me? And it's like, he's the ki he's killing too, but he seems to have this like moral high ground where he feels like right. he's better than them. And that also kind of comes into play during the big reveal where mm. this person is going on this whole big rant about why, how you, Yeah, why, why he's justified in what and he's it's just doing. Like, but, and... but you're doing the exact same yeah, thing. Yep. So this. I wish that this sort of like I wish he, the 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 killer had been called out on this sort of hypocrisy, because yeah. that was interesting but not fully explored. I agree. I I mean, if they do another one, they they got to get a little more creative on where the killers are coming from and their motivation. Because how many psychos can be born from the stab franchises right. in, in that movie world? And that's you know, also and another that's... thing that's interesting is that the Scream franchise. Within the Scream franchise, it's called Stab. It's called Stab. So yeah. that's just another layer of meta commentary. And so what this movie is doing is that the killers are a fan of the Stab franchise. Right. And are kind of obsessive with it, which yeah. is something that was also touched upon in Scream 5. Uh, so it's an interesting way to go. That, mm -hmm. uh, but It yeah. just seemed like they've done that kind of thing before. Like Scream 2, I want to want to say that was kind of the same. It kind of was. Uh, yeah, and I, I've watched one review that, that said that they're starting to get to Scooby-Doo levels here <laughs> in terms of, you know, <laughs> unmasking the killer. And it's like, oh, look, it was... <laughs> How had I gotten away from it, too? It yeah, it's the amusement kids. park proprietor. Yeah. We knew it all along. <laughs> Old man Jenkins? Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know. But what I do think is interesting about this franchise and what you, you said you know it, it still feels relevant is that not only do you have the meta commentary on horror movies mm. and that even changes because the first one it was just general horror movies right then it was sequels and then the third one was trilogies and the fourth one was reboots and the fifth one was legacy sequels and now we're kind of talking about franchises. franchises yeah so you have that but you also there's always an underlying social commentary to these movies. Where the first one was in the 90s, there was all this talk about violence in movies influencing kids and that kids are gonna become violent. And they address that directly with the line, movies don't make psychos, movies make psychos more creative. Mm. <laughs> uh, so you have that social commentary and two, three kind of did that. The fourth one did this kind of satire and commentary on celebrity culture yeah. and social media. And the fifth one talked about toxic fandom. And now this one is talking about conspiracy theories and mm. how easy it is to spread misinformation. Because uh, I think her character is Tara. Uh, they, there's this whole big conspiracy. Yeah, a big smear campaign against her. Against mm. her, saying mm -hmm. that she was the one, the mastermind behind yeah, the last. Yeah, she set all the other killings up. And, and so the fact that you have these underlying commentaries and they keep updating and changing, I think that's part of what keeps it so relevant. Yeah, that's a very good way to look at it. I think you're right, yeah. yeah. You gotta keep it relevant somehow, I mean. My concern, because there were big gaps between sequels, which kind of allowed them to come up with a new angle to talk about. Because the fourth one came out in 2011, which was like 11 years after the third one. Yeah. And then five came out in 2022, so that was another 11 years. This one came out very quickly. So my concern is if we have a seventh one come out very quickly, that it's going to start losing exactly i'm like you're really writing themselves into a corner because where are you gonna go yeah 
other you're just repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Right. They were able to pull it off on six. I feel. I yeah, think I, they were I, definitely I, a solid movie. Um, the acting was great. I thought everything was great. The reveal could have been, you know, yeah, yeah. But they have a really good cast, like you were saying. They um, do. You know, Jenna Ortega, who is really hot right now because of Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. There was even a little quip they, in the beginning yeah. of the movie. You They're see at a party. Yeah, you see, you see someone dressed Wednesday up as Adams Wednesday. dressed up walk around. Uh, it was, and that was actually, we talked about this when we came out of the movie. I think this is the first Scream movie to be set during Halloween, which adds a whole other level to it. I, I'm not going to say anything other than the subway scene. Yeah. Well, that's another it's thing. It's pretty intense. That's another yeah. thing we need to talk about. This is the first one to really change locale. Yeah, uh, yeah. The third one was set in Hollywood, but those first four movies were set in California, so that's yeah. not that much of a stretch. This one moves the franchise to New York. Yep, in the heart of it, New York. Yeah, uh, even though it was Toronto subbing for New York. <laughs> because it always is. Uh, it's cheap to film in Canada. It is. Uh, <laughs> you know? But they really utilize that new, loca lo new location for yeah. some really great suspense scene. The scene you mentioned, the subway, really suspenseful because yeah. it is Halloween. So you have multiple people wearing oh, the ghost yeah, face there was, mask. But not just the, it was a fun little, you know, hide and seek almost. Because yeah. you spot like the wolf man and you yeah. spot Pinhead. Pinhead. And the, the, the costumes were great. Yeah. It, but during that suspenseful sequence there's seven or eight ghost faces yeah, yeah. and you know somebody's about to get stabbed but you yeah. don't know and the it, lights are flickering yeah it's, it's really, really good well done i thought they did a great job uh, there's another great suspense sequence in a bodega yeah uh with ghost face with like a gun which i'm like oh geez yeah the first ghost <laughs> face like to really to really go at people with the gun so that was good yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there's another great suspense sequence where they're trying to escape Ghostface and they're between two buildings and they put a ladder between yeah, the two yeah. windows so there's some really clever suspense sequences in this yeah. the directors of this um, they go by the collective radio silence they did the last one as well uh, they're really doing a good job of honoring Wes Craven like they are good yeah. at creating suspense sequences mm -hmm. yeah I agree yeah. yeah it was very good yeah Gory. 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 They're getting gorier and gorier as, as the, the franchise moves yeah. forward, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, I mean, they're not like, because I know a lot of slasher fans, they're like, oh, I really want inventive kills, and like, it's really just stabbing. But Yeah, like, not, it's not so brutal. much inventiveness in it, but the it gets pretty crazy. It the gets brutality. Very, it's very brutal. Yeah. yeah. Very brutal. Now, I did want to say this, because you did see this with a 13-year-old. With a uh <laughs> Not all parents should bring their 13-year-old. They definitely should not. But parents, you know your threshold for your child. But she, for my, for my youngest, you know, just her watching a scary movie to begin with is great. Because yeah. she walked in on um, Rocky Horror Picture Show oh, a long yeah, time yeah. ago during the scene where um, Eddie's getting ice picked. Yeah. And that was like the worst thing she's ever seen in her life. Yeah. So that kind of like drove her away from scary movies until she realized it's all just fake, honey. And you know, yeah. you don't watch them to be scared. Watch them for how did they do that effect or how did this come about? So really getting her to think about those in different ways. Um, yeah, probably shouldn't bring most 13 year olds to the, to see Scream 6, but, but again, I'm not most people. And, and you know, parents, you know what your kids can yeah. handle. Yep. Uh, and she, I, I think like <coughs> we were a whole generation that grew up with stuff we probably shouldn't have watched. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, in terms of like R-rated action movies, oh, horror yeah. movies. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, even our kids' movies were a little bit on the darker Pretty side. Pretty messed up. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I think it's okay to introduce a kid, if you know that they can handle, to something a little bit darker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I took my uh, eldest daughter to go see Tropic Thunder when she was about 13. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm probably not the best to, to, to leave that up to, but... Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. What you do? So, what are you going to do? Uh, and, so, well, actually, you know, let me put the mask on for this question. <laughs> because I got to ask. Let me put the hood up and everything. So, uh... What is your favorite scary movie? Oh, well. Let me take the mask off. That's a I tough question to answer. <laughs> because how you answer that defines the movie, I think. Well, I guess I'm going to have to go with the one that truly terrified me as a kid. It was Candyman. Okay. And that messed me up for so long that I, I could not watch it. 
Could not watch it by myself. I watched it like once. Absolutely terrified me. Didn't watch it again for years and years and years. Finally rewatched it and saw how just incredibly cheesy mm -hmm. it was done. And then the remake they did was awesome. I, it brought which, back that childhood fear. Which like Scream Six actually does whew. a call to and says, "Oh, they're they're equally good." Yes, and the they are. And, and like you're, that's right. And he's right. He's one hundred percent right. I was yeah. like, "Oh yeah, that's he nailed that one." Because yeah, so I'd have to say, yeah, Candyman would be you my know, favorite scary movie. I haven't seen movie. any Candyman movies, the original or the remake Still, or any of the sequels. Don't watch the sequels. Watch the original and then watch the newest one. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. Uh, yeah. So Excellent. for me. I, I, you know, it's hard because the horror genre is so big. Like, but if I were to go like horror comedy, I probably would go Shaun of the Dead. I love Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Uh, I have a real soft spot for zombie movies. I love the original Dawn of the Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, George Romero, uh, just great. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, there was something about the year 1978 because 78 was Dawn of the Dead, Halloween, and then the remake of Invasions of the Body Snatchers, <laughs> which is... I, Awful. No, no, no. Invasion of the Body Snatchers of 78 is amazing. Actually. I'll have to rewatch that. I remember watching it as, it as a younger man. I'm like, oh, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. I don't know. Seen. You should revisit it because it's got some real creepiness to it. And it's got a great cast. It's got Don Sutherland, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, it's worth revisiting. Uh, I'll have to give that a revisit. It's ending, been a good many years. The ending is it's so parodied over and over again it's genuinely creepy but here's the thing like i saw that for the first time in college i was in the uh the uh room for the uh, student newspaper like yeah. i went in there with a friend we like, were watching it on a computer it was the night where the red sox clinched going to the world series the when they finally were gonna like the big one okay they were finally gonna go to the world yeah, series, yeah, yeah. like two thousand or so yeah. yeah 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 and the movie ends where it's like this desolate the world is over everything and they were rioting outside i'm like no no <laughs> no no i do not need you rioting i do not want body snatchers this is to too come. real it's this too much too real it's too much oh. so maybe that's also a factor of that like the movie ends the body snatchers have taken over the world, and I hear rioting outside. I'm like, oh, God. I'm going to die. <laughs> it's happened. I'm going to die. It's happening. Uh, a similar story to that from college was seeing the ring. Mm. Saw it. Get back to my dorm. My phone rings. I'm like, are you, uh, are you kidding me? And I answer it, and someone just hangs up. And I'm like, no one knows I went to see this movie. <laughs> what is happening? What is happening right now? Am I going to die in seven days? Like, what the hell? Oh. That was a good one. That the was Ring a good one was too. a really good one. Yeah. The remakes of those old, like, uh, with the Japanese or uh, Chinese horror movies. Yeah. That's Japanese. where The Ring came yeah. from. Uh, the, the Grudge. The Grudge. Uh, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Um, and a few other ones. I actually prefer, like, I haven't watched a lot of those original Japanese horror films, but I actually prefer, and this might be sacrilegious to say, I actually prefer Ring to the original Ringu because the Ringu has, like, and it's a cultural thing, like, the person investigating it has like a psychic connection and I'm like, eh, I don't like that. I mm. like the just like it being like Naomi Watts in the remake is just going through and investigating and figuring things out. In the original, it would just be all of a sudden she'd get a vision and she would know things. I'm like, that's cheap. Yeah. That's cheap. Cheap, cheap writers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I like, you know, I prefer like finding the evidence, figuring it out because yeah. um, it made it per a procedural, which is part of the thing I liked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, how would you rank the Scream franchise? I think they were a game changer. They introduced well, I mean, all like, of... like the, the like one the, like the series itself, like the films. Like, oh, how, how oh. would you rank it? Uh, one stays number one. I agree. Obviously, I mean, um, that opening is just like I just rewatched it. It's yeah. classic. Yep. Yeah. And. Yeah, I really like five and six. I'm not gonna I, I, lie. I do too. I, I'm gonna jump from one to five to six. Yeah. Um, the third movie is dead last for me. Yeah. 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 One, five, six. Two is solid. Four. Yeah. 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 That's probably, how I would go. I'd probably go with that ranking too. Uh, yeah, I might put two above five and six. It's been a while since I've Maybe. watched two. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing with three. Three. The first two movies were written by Kevin Williamson. Yeah. And he had originally intended it to be a trilogy. He had the whole thing plotted out. Mm. Uh, 
and he was going to do something else. I think he was working working on uh, the faculty or uh, teaching oh, Mrs. That Mrs. Movie. Tingle or something, uh, and they just moved on without him. So they hired somebody else to write it. They gave Kevin Williamson gave them the template. But they had to write it. And I feel like that's why it went a little bit off. Could there be. There was also some meddling from the Weinsteins. Because mm, Harvey yeah, and Bob yes. Weinstein produced the movie. And they always had this thing of meddling with movies, and particularly oh, yeah. horror movies, and messing them up. So that's why that one was kind of a mess. Yeah. 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 Uh, it did. I do appreciate it because it does have some fun cameos. Carrie Fisher, Fisher has a great cameo mm-hmm. in it. Jay and Silent Bob randomly show up, which is so <laughs> random. Uh, and then... Wes Craven shows up in Giant Silent Bob re, uh, Strike Back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was kind of like a, a little a little yeah. tete-a-tete. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. <laughs> you appear in my movie, I'll appear in your movie. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think I agree with that that uh, that ranking. Four, I like the opening to Four a lot because it's like very, very meta where the opening is them watching a stab movie and then it comes out and then it, it yep. goes and goes and goes. It's like... A never-ending mirror of like, <laughs> yeah, it's just a looped, <laughs> looped so I stabbings. Like that. And I really like the ending to Sc- Scream Four because it is very much commenting on celebrity culture. And because it was spoiler, it was Emma Roberts who was the niece yeah. of Sydney, and she wanted fame, and like she was going to get fame by being the survivor of the Ghostface Killer. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really good. She wanted all that attention. She wanted yeah, all that attention. The middle part of that movie, though, was just a dud for me. So, like, I'm like, it's really good opening, really good ending. I'm gonna have to revisit the series because it's been a while since I've seen the middle movies. Yeah. Um, we rewatched one and two with my youngest before we went and saw five, and then right into six, and she's seen them all. Yeah. A dozen times by now, but I'll have to revisit. Yeah. I don't remember those that well. I did revisit the first Scream. Which I, I loved uh, rewatching it because when you do know who the killers are, and it's, it's, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. They're acting. Yeah. Because they're really good. They're once really you, good. You're, once you start picking up on the subtleties that they're giving you, yeah, their it's a whole different movie. There are yeah. interactions between uh, Skeet Ulrich and Matthew Lillard. Where yeah. you can see their like dynamic and they're glancing at each other. It's like, the wow, best, the best, really good. The best killer duos in the entire franchise. Yeah. without it, in yeah. my mind, were the original two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do love uh, the second one because you have Laurie Metcalf come in as Billy's mom, yeah. who's getting revenge. And it's Laurie Metcalf is a is a great actor. Oh, she's phenomenal. And Timothy Oliphant was the other killer. Yeah. Uh, so their reveal is a little like comes out of left field. So you can't even really predict it. Nope. Uh, no, they don't really give you any clues for that one. It's no. kind of left field. But the, that duo of Timothy Oliphant and, and Laurie Metcalf, they're, they're, they're freaking great together. Oh, yeah. Uh, the third one, the reveal is the... It, it just... Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, uh, it's good. It's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, again, like you were saying, I don't know where to go from here. Uh, I they got to come up with something crazy. Yeah. Uh, there is an interesting direction they can go with one of the characters. I don't want to get into spoilers where they could go down a very dark path and it could be very interesting if they do it. I would be I would be jazzed yeah. if they did that. That would take that whole series, turn it on its head and create something completely it would be yeah. awesome. And then a lot of people are hoping this will happen because the original plan, as I was saying, Kevin Williams Kevin Williamson had a plan for the original 3 was that Stu, yep. Matt coming Lillard, back. was going to come back. My and daughter I, is 100% like, Stu's coming back. Yeah. You're like, he's going to be the next killer. And I'm like, I don't know. And if you watch carefully, there's a scene in Scream 2 where there's a party and Matthew Lillard just walks in the background. Really? Yeah. I never caught that. Yeah. Hmm. He just happened to be on set and they're like, why don't you just walk in the background? Just walk through the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, that would I, be okay. I would like to see that. You know, everyone's kind of expecting it, but... I think it would be really cool. But so if with, they want to do that in seven, but yeah. with Stu Mocker, is he smart enough to pull that off? I don't he know. wasn't in the first movie. No, he wasn't. <laughs> he know? was not the mastermind you know? at all. But so, anyway, we're we gotta we'll wrap this up. Yeah. So yeah, again, uh, thanks for being the sponsor. Oh, thanks for the invite, man. I can't wait to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we're gonna come back next month. I think we're gonna do two movies. We're definitely gonna do John Wick four. Oh yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Woo Maybe do uh, some Super Mario Bros. I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw something in there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so come back and get lost in movies again.